Arkham Knight is arguably the most controversial of Arkham games. Theoretically, it should be Origins, but Arkham Knight had more expectations. I've certainly had my roller coaster with the game, going from liking it to disliking it. Currently, I love it. I don't overall like it as much as Asylum or City, but it's still overall a damn good game. Now, I don't know if this is so much due to expectations, but it just feels like there's a lot of misconceptions of the game. Some people are really heated in disliking it, and I figure with a place where I am, I'd offer up some defense of it. Okay? Okay. First, the use of Joker. I gotta be honest, if there's any Arkham game where it thematically makes sense to have a Joker, it would be this one, right here. After dealing with him in Asylum and tangling with him in City, how could he not have the construct of the Joker manifesting in his head? Now I'll be honest, I don't like the Joker. He's like one of my least favorite Batman villains at this point. But here's the thing though, I'm totally okay with letting Joker slide if it seems narratively or thematically important. I was fine with the Joker came into Batman, because the movie was kind of referencing the 66 movie with those four Batman villains featuring in it. And it also shows that Batman as an established Batman who dealt with foes before. And here it feels like a natural build up with the battle in his mind. Asylum we dealt with Quincy Sharp dealing with his dissociative identity of Jeremiah Arkham. I think the whole Arkham series was leading up to this. Sure there's little things that I think they could have done with him. Maybe give an option for this Batman to punch his Joker construct. Outside of the two heightened occasions considering that was basically their whole relationship. And I don't know, maybe feature some other villains since Asylum did show him specifically turning into Scarecrow during those fearless nations. But as I said, it makes sense for him to at least be the primary talking head. Next up, Red Hood. Um, I overall don't like this Red Hood who's a whiny snot and most of his confrontations are within tanks as if Batman adopted him while he was going through a Batmobile tank phase. But all I say is it makes sense from a business perspective. It would be more interesting to explore, let's say, Quincy Sharp or those Prometheus hints. But since the Arkham franchise got so big with two wins in a row, it's like, well, we might as well have our own version of Jason Todd, am I right? But okay, maybe more legitimate defense. It's not like they were trying to hide this mystery reveal. Arkham series always had a weird history of twists. Like a lot of people saw the Raz al Ghul twist in City Coming, and they kept that towards the end. It could have made Jason Todd more of a passing name, but Batman is tripping balls. He totally see graphic visions of his former Robin, though. I do have an issue with Joker going that far and Batman taking that video evidence as proof. You know, that's a different ballpark. Anyway, next up the Cloudburst. Some consider this the worst boss in Arkham Knight. I for one dislike the tank battles in this whole thing. It really just does not make any sense. However, this specific one within uh, Fear Induced Gotham, not gonna lie, a little exhilarating. Give me vibes of that T1 Bane fight in Arkham Origins, where you have to do this one act to do damage, then run, run, run. Next, the Riddler race tracks. People say Batmobile races end, building a giant robot mech are beneath him. And I say, do you even know the Riddler? You Bantu's conjecture? Batman literally said he's insane. This is not a smart man to be respected. He's a lunatic that leaves too many Riddler trophies. Yes, he'd do something like Batman has to restart the whole race. It's part of his sick psychosis. He gets off to be beaten up. Okay, next, uh, multi-fear takedowns. I recall Godzilla Mendoza saying it goes against the stealth. And it's like, maybe there could be a more refined technical application. A little bit of what we've seen within Telltale Batman, but this stuff is cool as heck. And it works within limited spaces anyway. And finally, the whole Barbara's death thing. How could Scarecrow know, you'd say? Scarecrow studied fear, what are you talking of? He literally saw this example back in the asylum, when Batman thought Jim Gorn was dead. He saw he sort of looking everywhere, absorbing someone in their fear state. Batman did stay at that place for a while. I think he picked up that his trap worked. Anyway, that's it with defenses for now. Like I said, Arkham Knight isn't exactly a perfect game. There's certainly a lot of little issues I have here or there, but... Overall, I'd say it's a pretty interesting ride. Night on.